Christmas and the New Year had passed quietly because of the ceasefire. It was such a great feeling to know that for a few days at least, the New Year could be celebrated without fear of violence. We enjoyed Christmas in front of the television and watched Some Mothers Do Have Them, The Generation Game with Brucey and The Mike Yarwood Show. It was a more innocent time and the programmes could be enjoyed by the whole family. Friday the 17th of January 1975 the Irish Republican Army's ceasefire came to an end. Merlin Rees, then Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, said that he would not be influenced by arguments supported by the bomb and the bullet. Tuesday the 21st of January 1975, there was a series of bomb explosions in Belfast. The attacks were carried out by the Irish Republican Army. Two members of the IRA were killed when a bomb they were transporting by car exploded in Victoria Street, Belfast. I was gradually getting used to my life as a stay-at-home mum. I have to be honest and admit that I found it quite tough. As an outgoing person who had thrived in the workplace and enjoyed the camaraderie of co-workers, it was tough. Gordon was working in Belfast and doing night classes two nights a week, so days were long. He was also working overtime every Saturday to help us survive financially. I relished the company of my neighbours. We only had one car and we lived about a two mile walk into the village. I was definitely fit in those days. Every afternoon the baby was wrapped up and pushed in a large princess pram into Cumber. As well as being fit I also had a face like a beetroot. The walk in was against the wind and as soon as I got into the heat again I beamed like a Belisha beacon. Very attractive. Being at that time a wishy-washy Catholic, we still decided to have Louise baptised, more so that we could have a family do than the religious aspect. She was christened in the same robes as my mother had been baptised in. No hotels after, just back to the house for sandwiches, mushroom patties and sausage rolls. After that church going waned and I was a Catholic in name only. Since my treatment by the church re my wedding venue, I was very sceptical about the church and I was also beginning to doubt my faith. After years of saying rosaries, attending mass and being made to go to confession, I was again questioning the hold the church had over us. I can never understand how people I know have respect for the Catholic Church. I have seen enough bowing and scraping to priests. I refuse to be one of them. Around February I was introduced to a girl who lived in the next street. She too was breastfeeding and was a member of La Leche League. We became friendly and to cut a long story short, we ended up on Radio Ulster on the Gloria Honeyford show, doing a phone in on the subject. A great experience. I just wish we had mobile phones in those days so that we could have recorded it. It was such a pleasure to meet Gloria before she left Northern Ireland and became a big star. As a result of the show, we did the rounds of antenatal clinics, encouraging other young mums to have a go. It was a great success. In June, the local Presbyterian church advertised a beautiful baby competition. We couldn't resist it. We entered Louise and she won. A £5 voucher for the local chemist was the prize. We moved rather quickly when we saw the minister come in to congratulate us and to no doubt check out what services we attended. Felt a bit guilty. No, I'm lying, we didn't. I think the cute little mob cap helped. In July, we headed to Bunbeg for a week's holiday. We stayed at the Austin Guidor in Bunbeg. Not the most glamorous of buildings, but the view and the food compensated. It was one of George Best's favourite hangouts, though I have to say I never saw him there on my many visits. The Boyle family ran it as a family hotel, and the beach with its wrecked boat became an iconic place to have a photo taken. My family was there so we had some built-in babysitters, a luxury for us. Louise was in a baby walker and had a great time pushing herself along the corridors. She preferred that to walking. The views from the hotel were wonderful and as we strolled up the road to the village we were met by the smell of burning turf fires. One night, after settling Louise, we went down to the bar to find John Hume and his wife, along with Paddy Devlin and Phil Coulter. A sing-song ensued, 
and I will always remember John Hume singing The Town I Loved So Well with Phil Coulter playing the piano. A memorable night. Again a pity there were no mobile phones. It's so sad to see that the hotel is lying derelict waiting for a buyer to restore it. Thursday the 31st of July 1975. The Ulster Volunteer Force carried out a gun and bomb attack on the members of the Miami show band. Three members of the band were killed and one seriously injured during the attack. The holiday turned out to be more expensive than we thought and on return we received a letter from the bank saying we were overdrawn and the bank manager would like to see us. We got a warning about being overdrawn and the need to be more careful. So I took on a part-time job with a local newsagent, Miss Kelly's. Every Sunday morning for three hours, I sold the Sunday papers and got three pounds. I actually enjoyed it and felt more like a part of the community. People would now recognise me on the street and stop for a chat. The wage from this, together with my dole money, helped to keep us solvent. Saturday the 22nd of November 1975, three British soldiers were shot dead in a gun attack on a British Army observation post near Cross Midlane, County Armagh. Around November I got a letter to say that I had an interview to return to my job in the civil service. I had to go and hoped I wouldn't be offered it, but I couldn't resist putting my best foot forward and as a result I got a letter offering me the job. I had to decide to either turn down the job or make childcare arrangements and return to work. I couldn't envisage leaving our daughter with someone I didn't know, and so I turned down the job and said goodbye to my six pounds a week. A few extra shifts at the newsagent helped us to get through Christmas. Christmas 1975 and Laurel and Hardy were number two in the Christmas charts. We were entertained on Christmas night by Christmas Day with the Stars, starring Scylla Black. We headed to Warren Point to have Christmas dinner with the in-laws. We hoped for a quiet new year, but it was not to be. Wednesday the 31st of December 1975. Three Protestant civilians were killed in a bomb attack, carried out by the People's Republican Army, a cover name used by the Irish National Liberation Army on the Central Bar Guildford. Another horrific deed to end the year. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, post a comment and share it with your friends. You can also subscribe for free to my YouTube channel to be informed of future episodes. Thank you.